today we're starting a new venue we're starting to record live for video live a new avenue with which we can promote discuss relate and share Jesus in a different place than what we did before we're going to use Ustream in order to upstream to you that with which we do what we like to do is we like to say as it is the way it is where it is such as it is is what we share and in doing that that's what the video ministry or the ministry of video is all about it's talking about relating sharing and comparing our relationships that we have with each other with the world at large with the church with the ministry with theology with the Bible with the Word of God but more importantly the most important fact that we have at video is we share Jesus in an intimate and personal way we share who we are with who he is because who he is in my life is all I can talk about I have no idea what God is who God is or who you know or what you know I only can share with you what I know and I relate to you Jesus and so as we do that here at Ustream you know we're excited to see this new avenue that's been opened up an open door that now is provided to us oh sure you may have seen an ad before watching this but that's because freely you've received so freely give and that's what we do there's never a charge there's never any money you can't participate in in providing funds because God has provided salvation for you God has taken care of all that is needed so because God has provided because God is our refuge because God is our strength because God is our defense because God is everything we don't need anything that's why we do what we do in video and so in sharing that and relating that we wanted to talk for a moment to let you know where we're coming from oh I've been saved for a long time and I've been a born-again Christian for a long time I've gone through lots of experiences so sometimes you're gonna hear things and you go you did that and that and that and that and that well all I can say is just like Jesus said that one time when he was teaching the wind bloweth whither it will you neither know where it's coming from nor where it's going so too is everyone led by the Spirit of God God has led me by his spirit lots of times in a lot of my life and I've gone lots of places where most people won't go and have not or maybe they do and did or they haven't and they will or they should and they could but whatever they do they do it according to the Spirit of God and so you may see things and hear things and experience things about Jesus in a new and unique way that I pray you may be able to take as part of your life today that you may make it real for you as God by his spirit can do for you because I can't do anything for you I can only share with you what God has done for me and in so doing today I wanted to share something from Tozer called renewed day by day but it's a devotional that's what we usually do is share devotionals and we talk about and we relate about and sometimes we have Bible studies sometimes we have Bible teachings sometimes we have Bible preachings because most of the time whenever you see somebody giving you a Bible study they're not really giving you a study they're telling you something and if they're telling you something they're preaching you know that teaching is a different thing it's an interaction or interrelational type of divulgence of information with which it causes you to think to participate to relate and to learn by way of application into the realization of that knowledge with which the participation of the data being presented makes applicable means to you in order for you to understand and comprehend that's why most of the time no offense to most Bible teachers out there they ain't teaching they're preaching so what we like to do is we like to use words the way words are the way words should be the way God is and so in doing that we like to just say it is what it is the way it is and so if you learn great if you don't go away I <laughs> know I'm kidding <laughs> no go and learn and experience for yourself what it is that God may be speaking to you personally because that's the only way that you're going to know Jesus if it's personal and if it's real if he is then you'll hear if he isn't then you won't be able to understand or comprehend what it is that God might speak to you today so welcome to Ustream welcome to Vidivo welcome to Vidivo Live 
and welcome to Vidivo Ustream. Because we want to find ourselves in the streams of living water. Today, the absence of repentance brings spiritual uncertainty. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. 2 Timothy 2.25 It's kind of interesting when you look at that because you say, well, in meekness instruct them, but it says, to those that oppose themselves. I see that all the time, people in opposition to themselves. You know, they'll tell me they're a Christian and they'll go out and blast somebody. They'll tell me they're a Christian they'll go out and shoot somebody. They'll tell me they're a Christian they'll go out and kill somebody. They tell me they're a Christian and they'll act like everything else except what a Christian is. Because Christian means Christ-like and Jesus didn't kill anyone. Jesus doesn't kill anyone. Jesus came to save souls from hell. Jesus came to die for the sins of the world. Jesus came that we might live. No offense, but that's what a Christian does. That's what a Christian is. That's what a Christian lives. The man who is seriously convinced that he deserves to go to hell is not likely to go there. While the man who believes that he is worthy of heaven will certainly never enter that blessed place. Think about that. Let's read that again and think about what's being said here. The man who is seriously convinced he deserves to go to hell is not likely to go there. Do you deserve hell? Or do you think that you've arrived at salvation? You're assured of a place in heaven. You know that you get to go. Be careful. Grace and mercy abounds, but likewise so too does God's sovereignty rule. Better to be found in the grace and mercy than to be found in self-righteousness. And it says, while the man who believes that he is worthy of heaven will never enter the blessed place. I use the word seriously to accept the true conviction and to distinguish it from mere nominal belief. It is possible to go through life believing that we believe, believing that we believe, while actually having no conviction more vital than a conventional creed inherited from our ancestors or picked up from the general religious notions current in our social circle. In other words, today if we change those words into the way that we take it, it's kind of like, you know, a texting teaching. You know, you can get your Bible from text. You know, texting. You can get your Bible from Facebook. You can get your Bible from iPad. You can get your Bible from picking and choosing what you want to use according to what you want to lose, according to what you want to hear, according to what you want to know. You get to pick and go the way you should go. You get to. You can. Now, I don't know that you're going to experience cliche Christianity to that degree where you say, oh, well, God won't give you anything bigger than you can handle. Yes, he will. But you don't think so because you're cliche in it, not listening to what the Spirit of God may say. Or you may have a cliche that you think is, hey, you know, I, I confessed and, you know, and I, I named it, I claimed it, I got it, I'm living it, I'm doing it, I'm, you know, whatever it may be. And, you know, it's like, well, okay, fine. But did you talk to Jesus? Did he say something to you? My sheep hear my voice and they know me and they want to follow the voice of another. Have you ever heard God speak to you? Have you ever talked to God? Does God talk to you? You know, the questions are, if you're going to the person and you're going to stand before the person, isn't it a good idea to know the person? I mean, hey, Jesus said, yeah, you know, either I know you or I don't. Better to know him now than to find out he don't know you then. So it's kind of like, you know, you better get a handle on where you are or you may find out you might be far from what you think you are, as opposed to what God says who you are. Is it possible to go through life believing what we believe? Oh yeah, because we believe it, we don't know it. Once a person has been in contact with God, like I tell my wife, you can't take anything away from a person who has had a personal encounter with God. They cannot deny it. They may not choose to live it. They may not choose to do it. But once they've talked to God and God's talked to them, they know it. They can't deny that God has spoken to them. And that's what Romans says. All of us at some point in time have known God. Some point in time, God spoke to you. Some point in time, you knew it. And some point in time, you decided to either use it to your salvation or abuse it to your condemnation. It was your fault. No one else's. The poor quality of Christian faith and the uncertainties that mark the lives of a host of church members grow out of our modern evangelistic scene's absence of real repentance. So too the absence of repentance is the result of an inadequate view of sin and sinfulness 
held by those who present themselves in the inquiry room. No fears, no grace, said Bunyan. Though there is not always grace where there is fear of hell, yet, to be sure, there is no grace where there is no fear of God. For the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, and they that lack the beginning have neither middle nor end. It's kind of interesting that we have a lot of people realizing and starting to say that there is no hell because they don't want to deal with the subject and the reality of the fact that people are going to hell and dying and are permanently damned. Because we want to say that God does not come to bring condemnation, but to come to bring salvation. And that's true. God does bring salvation from the possibility that you may be heading to hell in a handbasket. Because people will hand you over to hell easily, but they won't provide for you the means with which to be saved, which is not so easy. Because it does require of you more than just simply, I believe, and so I accept it, and now I'm fine, and I go out and sin again, and again, and again. You see, in the end, if you wound up in hell, it was your own fault. If you wound up in heaven, it was because of your realization of a relationship that God wanted to, desires to, and chooses to provide for you the opportunity to know him in a personal and intimate way. The choice is yours. If you want to, out of fear of hell, pursue God, God will be found to those that seek him with all of their heart. If you want to pursue God because of love of Jesus, then follow after Jesus. But if you're in love with Jesus, then you're going to know the person you love, not love the idea of Jesus. You see, it's easy to create a false image, a false idol, a false religion of love that doesn't incorporate the realization that the love of God was manifested by the death of God on the cross. And that even in that with which Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. We have a purpose and a design that God said will happen to us. In the world you shall have tribulation. Not you shall have everything you've ever wanted and desired to get. Because God may give it to you. He causes the rain to fall and the sun to shine on the wicked and the good. And the only determination with which that is one or the other it's God making the determination. Because I can't tell you who is saved, and I can't tell you who isn't. I can tell you what someone may look like. I can tell you what someone may talk like. I may tell you how someone lives like. But Jesus alone is the one who is going to determine someone's salvation by simply standing before him and saying, Yes, Father, I know them, and they know me. Or he's going to say, to you or I. Depart from me. I never knew you. That's how serious salvation really is. Even though it's by grace you are saved and that not of yourself, but it is a gift of God, which freely has been extended to you, but is not a way you can pretend to get away with what you are doing. Because at some point in time, you'll find that though there is an assurance of salvation, the assurance of salvation is those that arrive, not those that did not. Because even in those that did not, some of those thought they had salvation and dece deceived themselves. So we need to come to that realization of a balance of the fear of God and the balance of the love of God and combine them together to have a reverence for God, to recognize that God is still in control. It isn't something you can claim grace and get grace by just simply saying, it's mine. But rather, it has to be extended to you by God alone. And Jesus himself said, these sayings of mine at the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are you if you do them, because if you don't, you weren't mine, were you, in the first place? Why do you say and call me Lord and do not do the things I said? Be careful. What Jesus said, he meant. And what he meant, he said. And he's going to do what he said he will do. So God bless you as you study and you learn about Jesus. And as you continue to grow in grace and the knowledge of the holiness of God and the grace of God, the mercy of God and the loving kindness of God. And as you begin to comprehend that Jesus isn't some kind of 
mamby-pamby or weak or strong. He's not some muscle-bound ape or some mason builder. No, he was a carpenter. But being a carpenter, he knew his wood. He knew hardwood, softwood. He knew what each purpose was designed for. And he was able to shape them and to make them into what he wanted them to be. And he is the one who said, take up your cross as a man who knows wood. Take up your cross and follow him.